This video is a part of a series that helps dinghy sailors onto the path to becoming bareboat charter skippers. The entire series is contained in this playlist here. If you have any comments or feedback for us, please share them and help make the next video that much better. Enjoy! Hi everybody, my name is TJ Kowalczyk. In the back, we've got IK Wobi, will be your presenters for today. Um, on behalf of Community Boating, IK and myself, I'd like to welcome you all to CBI to BVI, our take on how to go from skippering dinghies to skippering bareboat charters in the British Virgin Islands. So first thing, not, not maybe everyone doesn't know, what is bareboat chartering? Bareboat chartering is when you charter a boat and you are responsible for all of its operation. Why bareboat chartering? Personally, I think that it's a really great way um, to spend a, a vacation with your friends and share sailing with them, even if they're not sailors. And at the same time, it's a great kind of goal to set for yourself um, when you're getting out of dinghies. Like, what's the next step? I think that it's a great aspirational goal um, for skippers who are moving into, want to move into bigger boats. The first thing that we want to do is want to help you decide if bareboat chartering is something that you're interested in. It can go wrong. There's a lot of things to learn, a lot of skills that you have to master, and it takes time and it takes a little, a fair bit, of, a little bit of dedication, I'd say. We'll kind of tell you all about the things that you need to learn, and then you can decide if that's something that you're interested in doing. Again, you know, while we're telling, so kind of at the same time, we'll be telling you, kind of giving you a list of things that you need to learn and figure out. This is a two-hour lecture, probably more like one hour, and we're not gonna, we don't have time to teach you these skills. We're just gonna kind of outline what the skills are, you know, kind of give you some uh, context and also maybe throw in a few weird stories. <laughs> um, finally, um, we're going to introduce you to the options that you have for gaining the knowledge and developing the skills that you'll need to successfully uh, skipper a bareboat charter in the Caribbean. We're making a couple of assumptions here and just for, um, really for simplicity's sake, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot more complicated places, there's a lot more challenging places, a lot more challenging circumstances that you can do a bareboat charter. Um, so our goal was to pick kind of the, the easiest um, and most accessible bareboat charter for people here in Boston um, coming from dinghies. Um, so, and to that end, we started with the British Virgin Islands. As far as I'm concerned, it's the easiest place to do a bareboat charter that I know of. Um, not that I've done extensive, chartered extensively, but everything I've read and my own personal experience is that it's the easiest place um, to do your first bareboat charter. Um, and then, ah uh, yes, sorry? Why is it the easiest? Um, basically, it's kind of set up to be the perfect place to charter. They've got probably hundreds of boats that go on charter there. All of the sailing is in reasonably protected waters. Um, all, of the, all of the moorings, or everywhere you go has moorings, which is the easiest thing to kind of get on and stay on for the night. Um, most of the charter companies that you rent with, and if you go with Sunsail or moorings, which is what I rec would, we would probably both recommend, um, they have a guarantee that they'll get to you within four hours or something if you call them. All of these things are not possible or just like unheard of in other charter locations. Well, the first time that we got down there, we thought there was, it wasn't going to be as protected as it was. It was basically like sailing in the Boston Harbor um, with more consistent wind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're assuming that you're going to charter a 35 to 42 foot monohull. Anything smaller than 35 feet, it's not going to be all that comfortable. You're probably not going to enjoy it as much as you could. Personally, my, my lower limit is about 40 feet because that's when I can start to stand up below. Um, and anything larger than 42 feet and definitely larger than 45 feet have more challenges than the kind of smaller boats. There, there's just more systems involved. There's heart, larger loads on the sails. You need to develop more skills and more knowledge. So we're just kind of cheating your way out of that. Um, you're going you're gonna to want at least one other capable sailor aboard. Um, you know, two or three are better. Not everyone on board has to be uh, a sailor that you know, that you've, someone that you've sailed with, but you definitely want at least, at least one other person who you know and have sailed with before. And, and you want people that you can verify are capable. You want, you want someone that you've sailed with that knows how you do things, if at all possible. 
Um, you know, you can still do pickup crew if you really want to, like we do here at Community Boating, but um, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and then finally, uh, before you kind of make your, decide you're going to make the jump to bigger boats and to trying to be a bare boat skipper, get as much time as you can on the Rose 19 and the sonar here at Community Boating. Okay, so this is kind of an outline. It's more for this reference on the slide. So we're just going to kind of jump right in. Um, so all the bare boat charters that I've been on, they kind of go the same way. You kind of have the first day um, of travel. The second day you check out and you get to go to your, your first destination. And on the third day, and, on the, and then you, you spend the rest of the, your time out sailing the boat around wherever you want to go. And then finally, you got to check in the last day. So this is just to kind of give you, set some expectations on how it's going to go. Your first day, you fly out of Boston, you get, there, you get down there, you get you and your stuff to the boat. And really, by the time you get to the boat and, and, and get all your friends aboard and meet up with all your friends if you took different flights, by, you're not going to have time to get your boat briefing, your chart briefing, and do your provisioning, and then sail to somewhere, um, to somewhere for the night before the sun goes down. You're not allowed to sail at night. That's one of the rules of every charter company that I've ever chartered with. So you're going to have to you're going to have to work around that limitation, and that usually means that you spend the first night on the boat in the marina. Um, the second morning, you're going to get up. Um, you're going to have to buy, do your provisioning, which is a fancy nautical word for grocery shopping. And then you're going to and then you get your chart briefing and your boat briefing. In the chart briefing, they tell you about the boat. No, in the chart briefing, they tell you about the area that you're going to be sailing where you can go, where you can't go, recommended itineraries for how much time you have, recommended stops. Um, you'll have done this research ahead of time as well, but it's good to have them tell you specifically where you can and can't go and make recommendations that are you know, basically up to date. They, they give this briefing several times a day, so they know what's going on. Um, then the boat briefing. The boat briefing is all about um, the boat that you've chartered specifically, um, even if you're uh, an accomplished big boat skipper. Um, sometimes the charter boats have things that they do differently, and so you're going to wind up having to spend some time getting to know that particular boat. They'll show you all of the things that are unusual, and probably just about they'll probably show you just about everything that you need to need to use during the course of your charter. And then you're off. Finally, the last day when you come back, you usually have to stay keep the boat somewhere close to where they're going to where the base is in order to have it back usually by noon and then you so you kind of so you kind of sail back early in the morning get up early have the boat back by noon and then you do basically the check in which is basically they go over the boat and ask you if you had any problems and um, just basically look for like extra things they can charge you for <laughs> um, so don't let them get you so that's pretty much the whole Process, that's the process. Um, left out the middle part where you have the best week of your life, but uh, that's up to you. Any questions at this point? All right. So, boat, oh, sorry. On a, we usually have, I don't know, the most, the fewest we've had is five on a 39 foot boat. We've had eight on a 37-foot boat. We've had 10 on a 50-foot boat. Um, so it, it kind of varies. You have to look at the layout of the boat, which they'll have online for you to uh, check ahead of time. Um, basically, when we, before we book the boat, we kind of like look and see what the layout is, how many berths there are, um, you know, and figure it out. We also, you also have to account for how many people, um, how many couples you have versus how many singles. Um, if you fill up all your double berths with single people, you can fit a lot fewer people. Any other questions? Hello again. Thank you for watching this video. If you've appreciated this content, please let us know with a thumbs up or down in the comments so that we're encouraged to make our next presentation into a video as well. These take us a little bit of production time. We had to convince some of our friends to help out, borrow some gear and rent some other gear. But if you guys find it useful, We'll, make, we'll take the time and make our next presentation into a video as well. Oh, speaking of, if you're looking for the next video in the series, it's right here. Thank you, Seagull. This is the awkward pause. I don't know what else to say. Go to the next video. Hurry up and click. It's getting weird. <laughs>